can fast forward. Right, discounted cash flow. We so this is basically the question that we're trying to answer here. Why is money today worth more than the same amount of money um, sometime into the future? We saw in the video um, that we can take money that we receive today, put it in the bank, earn some interest, and that money over time is going to grow and grow. And the other side of that is inflation. So there are two reasons. Interest earn on the money that we have got today. And inflation is going to do the opposite. Inflation is going to erode the purchasing power of money over time. So perhaps today, 100,000 can purchase us three delivery vans. But in five year time, we might need a significant amount more than that. Inflation, as prices are going to be rising over time. So what's it all about? Our investment is going to have a predicted cash flow. Now this cash flow occurs over a number of years. The cash flow in future years, the net cash flow in future years, is going to be worth less to us than the cash flow, than the same money if we received it straight away today. So if we have a look at the predicted cash flow in year four, 100,000, that $100,000 is going to be received in four years time. If we're looking at it in today's dollars, we need to be able to make some sort of discount on that future income stream. So um, we're going to use a discounted cash flow of 5%. Perhaps interest rates in the economy are 5%. So that's money we can um, invest in a bank, receive 5% on. We've got a formula here. All we do, 1 over 1 point the interest rate or the discounted cash flow to the power of whichever year we're looking at. We never discount in year zero or the first year in investment. No need to. Time value. We're discounting into the future. So we can see here the formula becomes a lot clearer. So we've got that discounted cash flow. The exam will tell you which amount you'll need to discount by. And all we can see, we're raising that figure by whichever year we're looking at. Quite easy. And we make it even easier by providing you with the present value table in the examinations. So let's have a look. This time our annual net cash flows, they look like they're 250000 per year for five years. If we use a discount factor of 3%, all we're doing is taking 250,000, going across to year one. We see that we need to multiply our 250,000 by 0 0.9709. Year two, same discount factor, 3%. But this time we have to go to the year two figure and multiply our 250 grand by 0 0.9426. And so on and so on and so on for years three and four and five. And there we have, we have discounted our cash flows using a discounted cash flow of dis discount rate of 3%. Now the important, importantly here, a common question, what's the relationship between the discount factor used and the future value of cash flows? The higher the factor, the lower the value of your future cash flows. The higher the discount rate, the lower the value of your net cash flows in the future. 
So if you're only using 1% as your discount rate, your net cash flows are not going to be discounted that much. But if you're using something like 16%, then your future net cash flows are going to be quite significantly reduced. The net present value is the value of a specific stream of future cash flows presented in today's dollars. A project like a new factory or an extra drilling rig typically needs cash now in order to receive more money in the future. The net present value can be calculated by comparing the initial cost of a project to the total value of future revenue that project creates. Net present values are used to determine whether a project is worth doing. Dan, the owner of Dan's Pizza Shop, is considering purchasing a new pizza oven. Dan's profit per pizza is $5. The oven will allow him to make and deliver 1,000 more pizzas per year. However, the oven costs $20,000 and will only last for six years. To evaluate the purchase of the oven, Dan calculates the net present value of the project. The oven costs $20,000 in the current year. The incoming cash flows created by the new oven are calculated on a yearly basis. The oven will add $5,000. That's $5 times 1,000 pizzas in revenue to Dan's business every year for six years. But just because the new oven will make $30,000 for Dan over the next six years doesn't mean that's how much it's worth today. A discount rate is applied to this revenue so that a comparison can be made against an alternative investment, like a $20,000 bond that could be bought instead of an oven. The discount rates used are specific to each business. Although applying the discount rate will make the project look much less profitable than simply calculating how much profit it will generate over five years, projects with positive net present values should be carried out, while projects with negative net present value should be rejected. Net present value is one of many metrics that companies use to decide where they should spend their money. And net present value, that's just one step further than um, discount, discount, using a discount factor. All we're doing is adding up our, adding up our net cash flows across the years that we're looking at um, and summing them. So we're establishing the future earnings cash flow in today's dollars to make an investment decision, just like the video said. Show me. So we've got the sum of present values and we're going to minus the cost of investment or sometimes called the principal. Here we are, the same amounts, 250,000 net cash flows being returned by this investment across five years. All we're going to do is discount them. We know how to do that. Net present value, we sum them. The sum of our discounted cash flows across those five years total to just over 1.1 million. The cost of our investment, $1 million. Our net present value, therefore, must be $144,925. The higher the discount factor, the lower our NPV.